Everybody, welcome back to Fear of a Flat Planet. My name's Henry Jackson, and we got Mr. Mikey Cicero. Now, actually, I have to ask you this, Mikey, because I should know this because I've been emceeing contests with you in. Is it Cicerelli or Cicerelli? So it's Cicerelli in Italy, but yeah. us like North Americans, we say C uh, Cicerelli. But I mean, I appreciate when people say Cicerelli, like, you know, I like that way. And so, oh, oh, well, I mean, fairly obviously, your Italian-Canadian descent. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I've always wanted to know, is the Italian, so, I mean, you always hear about Italian-Americans and, you know, yeah. there's a lot of stereotypes in movies about sort of the Italian-American, um, like, community. Is there a similar thing going on in Canada as well? Oh, for sure. Like, the town I grew up in was a lot of Italians as well, and, like, there's definitely a crew like I remember it was funny because I was like always a skater kid and all my friends would like be soccer soccer players and stuff and I didn't fit the mold as like Italian kid at all and I always just like oh I, I wanted to have long hair you know everyone's got like short hair with like the gel in the hair it's pretty funny so th there's definitely it in my little town of Ancaster for sure yeah and whereabouts is Ancaster where are you from then so that's like uh like 45 minutes south of Toronto in okay. Ontario Canada yeah and uh, where are you based these days? Now I'm in Whistler pretty much full time, like yeah. throughout the winter and been spending summers there a lot. And I mean, I feel like as an Ontario kid, it's like not many big hills. It's a bit flat. So you go out west, see the mountains and you really don't want to leave. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's what happens for like, you'd be surprised how many people live in Whistler that are like either from Quebec or Ontario because they move out west. So they're like. I'm never coming home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been a, it's been a theme through the through the through the podcast. Yeah, we're doing like oh yeah, everyone lives in Whistler. I mean, it makes sense. I've been to Whistler. It's like a pretty well, I, yeah. And being well, Canadian, you know, it's like kind of like the the mecca of the snowboard industry for Canada. You know, it's like where everything goes down. Good backcountry riding, amazing park riding, and it's like kind of the best place to be, I'd say. And so, growing up then in Ontario, what was your local hill? So I rode, actually learned how to ski and snowboard at a place called Georgian Peaks, like a private ski club, just up in the Blue Mountains. And that's like where my parents were members and where they skied and where my brother and sister skied. So I was like a full skier, ski kid. And then I was seven years old and I would, I was just begging my parents for a board. I was like, please, please let me snowboard. And then I met Sam Marcotte. I think you might've met him before back in the day. He's always around at the contest. So he's my first coach, but he worked at Georgian Peaks and then we kind of branched off and started going to Mount St. Louis. And then he started simple snowboarding and kind of like we moved on from that resort, but that was kind of where it all started. And then the simple snowboarding was all based out of Mount St. Louis, which like Jasmine rode there, Tyler rode there, Elliot, our coach, coach for simple. So we've all been like around each other for a long time, which is cool. Ah, so you came up through the, through the scene that way. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. So were you the only snowboarder in your family then? Yeah, still am. Yeah, I remember I tried to get my mom to snowboard and did like two days of it. And it's a classic, you know, like bruised tailbone, hurt wrist. <laughs> it's hard. I feel like it's hard for people that you, you're already good at skiing. You can get down a hill fast. Why would I get onto something that I can't get down the hill? Like it makes sense for like when you're young and want to learn, but it was hard sell. <laughs> Yeah, I feel, I feel like back in the day when snowboarding first popped up, there, were, there was that attraction of like, mm -hmm. well, snowboarding used to be like a bit cooler. Than yeah. But I, I feel like that balance is sort of maybe not. Yeah, balanced. for sure. And then like, yeah, from like, you know, parents stuff. Like, I just want to go ski at Prey. Like, it's like the whole thing. It's not like they're trying to like go. I feel like that's what snowboarding is so cool for is because, I mean, a lot of people that snowboard, I feel like they all, you set goals more than just like, you know people that go and turn all day on skis you're like even if you're like riding a small hill on a snowboard you're like oh, i kind of want to work on my front ones today or i kind of want to like get that heel side turn like better which is kind of dope i feel like yeah a bit, a bit more pro focused on progression there yeah sick yeah um, so growing up you're i saw an interview with you a while ago so you've got quite a sporting dynasty in your family is that right you yeah like, a, is it a big hockey side to the family as well? Huge hockey side. So, like, my whole 
pretty much my upbringing was like hockey, 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 because we had my dad's first cousin, my second cousin, Dino Cicerelli, played in NHL for 20 plus years. He's in the Hall of Fame, like really amazing hockey player. He's still in the top 20 for most goals scored ever. I think he's like 18th or something like that, 608. But uh, yeah, so we, I think the whole family was like, well, if one Cicerelli can be a professional hockey player, there's got to be another one. So like, it was like, and I, I honestly didn't like hockey at all. I remember being like eight years old and being like, I just want to snowboard. And like, I just don't want to play hockey. And my dad was so devastated. He's like, please. <laughs> oh, no way. <laughs> yeah. Did you, did you, Pretty so you didn't, you didn't enjoy it at all? Were you just like, no, I like I like the skating aspect, but I just honestly have the worst hand-eye coordination. Like I could never, I never scored a goal because I couldn't stick handle that well. <laughs> I couldn't shoot the puck, so I'd all. But my brother and sister went up to like AAA, and they were really talented uh, hockey players. Like my brother was a goalie and stuff like that. So, I, it, but it was funny though because it'd be like me, you know, if I have kids and my son was like, oh, or my daughter's like, I don't, you know, I want to be a skier, or I want a scooter, I'd be like. <gasps> But you kind of have to accept it, I feel like. <laughs> so the, the, the skates went in the bin, the skis went in the bin, the snow yeah. came out when you were, you said, what, around seven, eight years old? Seven, yeah. So, like, the first season, I still would ski because my parents, really, they're, like, still wanted me to hold on to the ski thing a bit. So I would ski in the morning and then snowboard in the afternoon. And eventually, like, meeting Sam, he kind of was like, oh, yeah, like, we should just get Mikey full-time snowboarding. And then pretty much from there, I, like, just yeah never stopped and fell in love with it like it's definitely been a, a passion of mine since a young age which is which is very lucky too you know it's very fortunate to say that yeah and I, I feel like you popped onto the scene at a relatively young age as well I mean I'm trying to re remember the first yeah like we would have met. so it would have been like maybe when I was like 15 yeah I got like sponsored by Burton and started like getting invites to like I think I did like the Burton high fives and then obviously like got into the U S open and stuff. So yeah, pretty young. And that was, I'm 24 now. So it's almost been like 10 years of, of that, which is pretty wild to think, you know, I'm like, so, so crazy to think they've been doing it. So lucky, man. It's fucking and dope. How, how did that go getting on Burton? Were you, was that through regionally through Canada or did you go straight to the, straight to the sort of. The so year? I was on Burton when I was younger, like 12 years old for just like the rep in Ontario. And obviously you'd always try to like, it was when like the Burton Groms, you know, like the team. And I was always like, so I was like, I want to be doing that. And it was so hard to get in contact with Vermont. So I actually rode for GNU and like Union for a while. And then one day Sam actually set it up for me. We did a coaching day with Mark McMorris in New Zealand. And he kind of helped me. I really I owe a lot to him because he helped me get on Burton and then actually helped me get an agent. His agent Ninja started representing me as well. And that was like when I was, I think I was still 14 at the time. Wow. And Mark just kind of, I guess, uh, saw the potential and was like, yo, you, like, and reached out to Burton, kind of like made the relationship happen. And then I was, I remember getting the phone call when I was like, I would have been in grade 10 and Ninja calls me. He's like, you want to ride for Burton? I was like, uh, yeah. Like, this is like, I was blown away. I was like, this is crazy. <laughs> like, had no idea, you know? So it was pretty wild. And was that something, was that something to be able to, you know, obviously, you know, you mentioned that your dad was like, you know, please hockey. And that was that something you'd be able to go like, yo, I've got an agent. I'm on Burton now. Yeah, I know for sure. They're like, my parents were like, wow. And like, obviously like with snowboarding, a lot of it is financial. And like my parents were spending, you know, a good chunk of money for me to do what I'm doing. So then when money started coming, it took a little stress off them. And it was just like, obviously like it's, it was really lucky to start getting money at that age and just like travel budget and stuff but it still helps a lot you know like it's, oh, cool. it's expensive yeah. sport so yeah they're definitely stoked and I was just over the moon because I I think I actually wrote a letter when I was like nine years old to like Burton still at the actually the place in Ontario but like I wrote a letter trying to get sponsored you know like the classic you like I love snowboarding I can do backside 360s or something you know it's like it's so funny but oh, yeah definitely stoked you're still on Burton to this cool. day and so then, yeah. I mean, you've been fairly contest driven for, for the most part of the career so far. Huh? Yeah, so far, for sure. It's been uh, definitely contest based, just like I feel like Canada, even like, you know, slope style snowboarding kind of took a, a big like, like not a hit, but like they rose a lot. You know, it got a lot of attention when like Mark and Seb were like killing it a lot. 
So then the national team came and then obviously me as a kid watching Mark and Seb in the X Games being like, wow, that's like crazy. And then made it more like a real possibility for like, you know, Tyler, Darcy, all of us to come up. And even now the next gen crew, it's like they definitely paved the way for slope style snowboarding in Canada. So I think that's, that's why I was definitely contest based for a lot of it. And definitely moving on, I got to film a bit for the Burton movie and I'll have some shots in that in the back country. So definitely like still want to compete, but I definitely have views of filming in the future. How, how hard do you find that? Is it, is it a hard balance to, to maintain, you know, cause obviously on the national team, you've got commitments there, but the, I guess the, the, uh, yeah. the majority of snowboarders, the sort of inner soul of snowboarding is calling you to maybe filming or, you know, a bit. Totally. More. And like, and that's the, the hardest balance. thing is I'd say, yeah, like what you said is it, it is challenging and it's hard to balance because you're like, okay, well, do I go, three more years, two more years, you're like, you look, you're at schedules and you're trying to like, cause it is, it's almost, you know, doing what Seb does or like some of the other guys that film full video parts while competing. It's so hard on you. Like, I don't know if I would be able to do that where I probably just would want to put all my eggs into filming, you know, like this, I'm just filming for a video part now, but yeah, it's definitely hard to, cause you know, where I'm still young and I know I can still, still getting better at snowboarding. I'm like, I still have, I've done well in contests before. I'm like, oh, I probably could do that again. You know what I mean? Like, so I'm like, you still have that in the back of your mind. Like, I want that. So it's definitely a hard balance. And you're right. It's like, I feel like every snowboarder, it's like you watch video parts and that's, I don't know. I think that's just me. I, I find it more respectable watching a video part than someone's content winning contest run. Cause I mean, a lot goes into it and it is super respectable because it's not easy at all. So, yeah, and I mean, it's obviously a strong heritage in, in the Canadian scene of filming. Yeah. Films, the Wildcats and all the guys back in the day. And, you know, Mikey. Totally. Guys these days. And, yeah. And Solars and everyone. And like, yeah, you definitely like, it's kind of like a, even more of a proving ground, I feel like, than competitive snowboarding. Because it's like, man, like I had, like, even the days I went out this year, it's definitely scary what we do on the slope style. But what those dudes do in the backcountry, it's like, you're hitting big jumps and, high consequence and it's like you don't really realize it until you're right there you're like whoa this is the real deal and those guys have been doing that for, for like 25 years you know in the whistler backcountry and all over it's cool what is the season shaping up to look like for you at this point do you do you you know obviously we're living in quite weird times. Yeah, challenging times for yeah, sure you've got, you've got a, a sort of idea of what you're up to yet yeah, so we do have a contest schedule plan. Like, we'll go right now. We're going to be in Austria, I think, January 4th for the Kreisberg Big Air. And then we'll do a week in between. And then we'll maybe go shred like Lax or Absolute, depending on where we're going to be. And then we'll do the Lax Open. Come back to America for Mammoth Contest, so the Grand Prix there. And then China World Champs. So th there's like a full schedule, which is it all, all everything has to go to plan obviously with COVID and we'll see, but I mean, I'm, I'm kind of taking it as it comes. I'm not trying to plan too ahead. Cause then you get so set on something. You're like, you know, I just literally live week by week pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. It seems to be a common yeah. theme. They're talking to a lot of yeah. people at the moment. Just like, yeah, just, you know, let's see what happens next week. You never know. Yeah. Cause you, and I feel like then you won't get so yeah sad. It's like, even, you know, the resorts are supposed to open up here and, on the 26th, Whistler open. It's like pff, cases are rising. I'm going to be like, I might be, I might honestly cry if, if it goes like, oh, no, we're not open. I'd be like, what? Oh, no. I know, but I, I am, I'm, I'm have full faith because I feel like snowboarding and like it's an outdoor activity. We're wearing gloves and masks and I feel like you can socially distance pretty well. So, especially if you first, first off a lift, just get away from everyone. Just make sure on the first gone. Yeah. 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 yeah, and if not, we'll just go sledding, I guess. <laughs> no, <laughs> not so okay. bad. And, and you know, obviously this year, uh, we can't really avoid the topic of uh, its Olympic qualifying year yeah. coming up again. Now, you've been through this before. Were, mm -hmm. you in the, uh, were you in the mix for Sochi as well? Sochi, I was kind of in the mix, but I was like kind of like when I first moved to Slopestyle, I think I was like maybe three spots away but definitely the last one was when i was, I was like the alternate so i still yeah. went to korea just as like the reserve which was kind of weird because i'm just like sitting there and like you know 
it's, it was a weird experience. I definitely enjoyed being there and it was cool to see it all, but I really was, I got to ride the course and I was like, fuck it. You know, I'd be die to get a chance to actually compete, you know, cause I was right there for it. So hopefully this year I, I can be in that, that top four so I can be there and, you know, represent. Okay, so how do you gear up? Do you, do you have a special sort of way of approaching the season? Do you, you know, I chatted. To, uh, I was chatting to Derek, and and mm-hmm. he's talking about in the past, like he's kind of gone in with like an overall structure of like I've I've got to get like I've got to get to this point, and then I get to go, and then I can worry about mm. it then. But he said he's sort of trying to mix it up and be like, actually, you know what? I want to go into each contest a bit with a bit more fire. So mm. you know, I'm more used to that kind of like the 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 heat to win. Like, do you have a sort of structure i mean i guess it's really yeah hard. i think Canadian i think for me i'll just i just go to every event and try to ride like the best i possibly can and if it's on and it's on and that's gonna be your week like i don't like go to an event being like well i need a fifth here i'm like i'm just trying to literally ride as best i can you know yeah. and then the results will come like i feel like the best seasons i've had is just from just whenever i'm the most stoked and having fun shredding I feel like that's, I'm definitely like a vibe person. <laughs> if I'm like feeling good, I'll, I'll ride good. So that's kind of my MO, any, I guess. Do you have any routines to get the vibe up or, or any special? Uh, that, that, that make yeah, it- like I'll, I have like some songs. Like I love Future Islands, if my favorite band. So I'm always listening to them to try to get me. And then also like if I'm like t- trying starting to take it too seriously, I'll be like go to a cruiser run and go, you know, do a couple front threes or whatever and just like, try to like get my stoke back before because if, if you do take it too all too serious then i feel like it's like then i'm like why am i doing this you know it's got to be fun in the end of the day yeah it's funny it's funny watching how different people function in that because i get to stand yeah. at the start gates obviously a lot of events and some people are so yeah. like ah yeah you know like whatever yeah. and then other people are just like laser focused yeah and like, it's maybe awesome. maybe if i was laser focused it would help but i just I don't know if I could do that. <laughs> Keeping it fun, though. I mean, yeah, like you said, at the end of the day, if it's not fun, yeah. Got to like, be enjoying you know. it. So, what about what about the events schedule? Which uh, which events are you looking forward to the most? What's your favorite? Uh definitely Lax is my favorite event. Always, it's just like I've, I think you've been there every year for all the European opens and lax opens. I've, it's like, we get spoiled with pow or sunny weather either, or it's like, you're always going to leave that place super stoked. Like, I don't know. It's, it's like, I, I have a special place for that. Like in my heart, it's just like a good, good vibes and good fun, man. It's like, you can't really you, beat it. Have you podiumed in lax? Uh, I got fifth in the lax open that year that they, when uh, like Reto, when he had it like, crazy prize money and everyone first, had their first own. year it switched so that from the birth yeah to yeah first year it switched yeah. yeah so that was definitely that was a fun year because I think, I think it was like the top top five was canadian or something like that or something yeah, like that i can't right. remember it's what it was yeah. yeah yeah that was fun i probably missed my flight the next day actually <laughs> <laughs> that's understandable um and what about what about off hill activities? We you know you mentioned a bit of hockey from back in the day. You've seen some uh, pretty heavy skate clips been going down. Yeah, definitely. Since we didn't travel this summer, it was like kind of like just skateboard season. It was fun, man. Even Dars skated a lot, and all of our friends and with. It was cool because like I don't get to be around the skate park. Like I'll obviously go every time I'm home, but you kind of started to get like a community vibe. Like the skate park be- became kind of like the bar or like you know like the hangout spot because nothing was open so you just go to the skate park see all your homies and skate so i was sick and i actually bought a golf membership so i was golfing a lot this summer too oh yeah what do you play off what what, what handicap are you uh, i'm like a 15 handicap so not too bad that's pretty sweet getting that yeah i had i had four rounds shooting 80 straight and i was like my goal was to shoot break the 80 this summer and i was like so close but next summer <laughs> but yeah a couple of the other guys like craig uh plays a lot of golf mark even i've played a couple rounds with him and like they love it too so it's always a good time you got a good you got a good crew then on the course yeah yeah we're definitely the best. Shoots the best golf i think seb is the best golfer like i'm pretty sure he shoots in like this mid 70s he's like just like really good at everything i was <laughs> gonna crazy. say is it like 
you just scroll through his Instagram and you're like, oh, wait, he's doing one of those trick shot things that you've seen. Yeah, and like when he just posted like a double kickflip into the surf, I was like, what? Yeah. Yeah. He might be the most talented person out there. <laughs> Do you think like just talent or has he just got so much energy that he has to be doing something yeah. the whole time? I don't know. I think it's got, yeah, I think it's talent and energy. Because like he can, if you put him on a skateboard and a mini ramp, like he probably hasn't skated in a while, he'll like do a blunt kickflip like. You know, right away, it's like he's like so good. And yeah, I've played golf with him before, and I'm like, holy crap, he's good. So. He gets quite competitive as well, though. I remember, I remember it was, I can't remember which event it was. I remember there was a ping pong table, and it was basically. Oh, was it? Uh, I think it was World Champs in China. That was it. World Champs in yeah. China, in Yabuli. He was trying to take down every single person. It was awesome. It was like any moment you came down, he was on that ping pong table, like, you want to go? You want to go? I'm like, yeah tired man i'm gonna go like go to the hot tub and he's like all right yeah afterwards yeah yeah i think you'd be like we'd all come out from dinner and he's still playing it's so funny he's it was, actually I don't, i've never beat him in ping pong the guy's really good at that <laughs> was it not him and maybe petu were petu, like too yeah he, he, they were like the going head to head that was a fun that was funny just put a whole the whole snowboard community in a club med for a week and a half that was wild. The, 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 the TTR is kind of last hurrah, wasn't it? Yeah, that was that. Yeah, that was sad when Rope got a bit nabbed there. I remember he was so, so pissed. Yeah, the whole, I love Rope. The whole community in, in a club med with, a, with an open bar policy. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> yeah, it seems like it'd be a perfect event. <laughs> yeah, well, there's some good karaoke sessions going down there. I do remember that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, that's yeah. good times. See, that, and that's the cool thing about snowboarding is just so lucky like the memories that it's not even like you know obviously i cherish the times where i have been able to podium or like win an event but like the memories you make in between is like i think something that you'll even remember more just it's, it's, like, it's actually it's something I, I can't remember if it was an interview with mark that i watched or i read and, and he was actually mm-hmm. talking about the kind of vibe at the last olympics in the in the in the athlete village yeah, we were chatting to, to athletes from different disciplines, and they were like, mm-hmm. Do "You guys all just sit together with you, with your different countries, like what's yeah. that?" Yeah, like I think that's the thing too. Like we're lucky with snowboarding is that we get to do events all year, and it's not like obviously the Olympics is huge, and if you do podium, it, it will change your life, you know. But like we have do tour every year, we have X Games, we have all the World Cup events, we have all these events that like it's not we have so much to look forward to. But for a lot of athletes, it's like they train for four years for that one event. So they're going to like be, you know, thinking about that directly after the Olympics for the next four years. And like, for us, it's like, Oh, we, you know, I feel like we have more, there's not, there's a lot more to snowboard. And you're like, Oh, you're thinking about a power trip you're going on. You're thinking about this rail you want to hit or going to shred with your buddies. It's not like if you're like a bobsled, you can't just go bobsled with your homies. <laughs> It's, so it's a bit different, I feel like, in our sport. I hadn't actually heard about too much about that, how like, the come down for the other athletes must be like, right, well, four years yeah. back, and like you said, there's so many other events for snowboarders. Yeah, so I think I that like might be... Within the, within the national teams as well, especially the Canadian national team, you guys, you guys treat you know, the events with more or less... I mean, obviously, the Olympics are the flag. No, but yeah, you treat... Well. I feel like yeah, you treat every... This is important, right? with the same yeah the level of importance is important for sure because you're like you know every event you want to ride your best and showcase your best riding and every i feel like now too the courses and everything it's like there's opportunity to do your best run or your your best tricks it's not like you're gonna like have to hold back because of a certain like course not being up to par it's like you got you know that's why i think it's good i feel like fuck, if we could get a better tour or like more live streams to showcase that people would be like wow because even when i'm watching it and i'm there i'm like whoa yeah wild you know (laughs) well maybe it's maybe it's something that will come out of this uh, situation around the world because obviously events are not going to be as much of an event let's say Mm -hmm. you know draw people in in different ways because of maybe restrictions that people can't go to the actual event so yeah, totally. Like I think other sports have done well, like NHL and I huge golf fan, so I've been watching the PGA tour and they've have no fans, but like they're like still having every event and so many people are tuning in because it's almost more accessible now that you're like you don't have to go there. You can get all this insider exclusive coverage, which is kind of cool. 
Um, so then, well, Mikey, I mean, I think we've, we've kind of... Uh, yeah, it's been fun. Yeah. I don't want to keep too much of your time because obviously you're on your training camp and you gotta you got to get some rest. Um, I appreciate it. Yeah, no, thanks very much for stopping by for a chat. Enjoy the surf. Hopefully you get a freaking tube. Yeah, I've uh, snapped two boards the other day, so it's not been going too well recently. But Oh, no. You know, my, my yeah, horrible story. Sorry, we, we won't talk about it yet. No, we don't need to talk about that. But, yeah. of course, at this point, I'd like to say, Mikey, obviously you're from, from Ontario and came up through the scene there. Um, if yeah. anyone wants to help out with the Canadian Snowboard team, you can go on canadasnowboard.ca and you're able to help the team in many different ways. Mikey and the guys can benefit from this. They've got some epic apparel out there, beanies, or I should say toques, hoodies, toques, yes. things like that. All the money from that goes towards the team. And you can also donate. Um, if you donate, you can actually choose where your money goes. So if people donate, Mikey, for example, they could choose the Ontario Provincial Snowboard uh, team That's awesome. to donate their money to or whichever territory you're from. Um, I love so that. Donate, and you can choose the, the main team, of course. And, you know, every dollar helps. You can probably them. choose Yukon, too, if you want. Exactly. Choose Yukon yeah. and help this park keep yeah. going and get the... Uh, the, uh, the Yukon scene back out on the map or sort of explode yeah. onto the national scene. Mikey, thank you so much for joining us. Of course, thank you to Skull Candy as well for making this happen and uh, have a great rest of the training camp.